bald. What is bald? Smooth. Strongly? Is bald a state of mind? Whose mind? My own? What is bald? I ask. Is it to be without hair? Without soul? No. To be bald is to have strength. To have strength means to have soul. To have a soul is to be living and experiencing. Today is a day for bald. To be alive and to persevere. And so I ask, why is bald? <coughs> anyway, here we are in a pleasant city when suddenly, disaster. Uh oh, a mega yoked throbbing purple monster appears. These bozos were already laid out. A bald man, who I will refer to as Sayatama, enters the fray, yeeting a child from the clutches of evil. The purple guy monologues to the uninterested hero, then dies. Sayatama is in agony from being too strong. Flashback to a less bald, depressed businessman brand Sayatama during a fateful encounter with a lobster wearing a diaper. The lobster man is on his way to tear apart a small child who drew nipples on him. He spares Sayatama because leaving him alive would be a worse fate. Sayatama bumps into the child, who has an outstandingly endowed butt chin. He is conflicted about warning the child of his impending demise and getting involved. Lobster man arrives to conduct business. One Punch Man tears out one of the lobster's peepers, killing him and saving the child. Back to the present, Sayatama trained so hard his hair fell off. Another monster shows up. It's an Attack on Titan reference. A long backstory about Bill Nye the Science Guy juicing his roided brother ensues. The Giga Juiced Muscle Man is excited about being strong. The city is now in panic. Sayatama appears suddenly on Big Boy's shoulder. The small brother orders his meat monster to squash one punch, but Big Bro squishes little guy instead of Puncho. Big guy rages at his hubris, and Sayatama is thrilled to finally have someone he relates to. Having overwhelming strength is pretty boring, and One Punch Man punches muscles ending his drug-infused rampage. One Punch Man goes home depressed because he's too strong. He donks another dweeb, laments about feeling empty and living a monotonous life. Finally, an opponent who is worth fighting shows up. A hard-fought battle with the buff mole people ensues. One Punch Man is once more fulfilled, but it was all a dream. The poor clock has been killed with unjust cause. Then, small mentally disabled mole people show up and are instantly defeated. There is a sudden and mysterious deadly mosquito outbreak. One Punch Man finds he cannot defeat a mosquito. An edgy robot twink appears. The Svelin gets sucked dry. A hot mosquito babe manifests by orgasm, then complains. The cyborg fella fights the babe. Sayatama is outraged by the mosquito he was struggling to kill and chases it to the center of the cyborg and mosquito babe's fight. The cyborg goes Hiroshima on the swarm and Sayatama is rendered nude from the explosion. The mosquito lady engages her Super Saiyan mode and almost kills the poor metalcore bassist. Sayatama channels his inner Will Smith and obliterates the sexy mosquito with a flippant comment, mosquitoes suck. The cyborg, whose name is revealed to be Genos, pledges himself as Sayatama's student. They get to know each other at Sayatama's house. Genos is very direct and doesn't mess around. He bores Sayatama with his backstory, which, in summary, is that Genos's parents and hometown were bulldozed by an insane cyborg, so he found a cool scientist who turned him into a whacked out killing machine so he could avenge his family and fight for justice. Mosquito Girl was apparently part of a group of genetically engineered monster people, whose leader has now taken an interest in Sayatama. Sayatama's house is raided by goons from that facility. They get turned into fertilizer because Sayatama is upset about his apartment getting forcibly redesigned. Genos has a fight with a cyborg, which turns out just to be a gorilla. There's a genius scientist who is too smart, so he decided to do f***ed up shizzle in his lab fabricating weird creatures, cloning himself, and becoming immortal. The gorilla is threatened by Genos, who finds out about the House of Evolution. Sayatama and Genos decide to attack right away due to a sale tomorrow. The facility is in a panic, 
they release their pet mongoloid, Carnage Kabuto, from his baby restraints. The two heroes arrive, and Genos destroys the whole building with his gun. However, there is a basement. Carnage Kabuto is a bloodthirsty freak with a god complex and no humanity. Sayatama and Genos eventually encounter the beetle freak. Genos attempts to defend Sayatama, who doesn't really care that much. Genos receives an impromptu afro and is defeated. Science Guy monologues to kill time. One Punch Man humors Mr. Krabs by standing still. Kabuto is terrified by Sayatama's radiant Giga Chad energy. Sayatama is prompted to reveal his secret to ultimate power which just ends up being basic strength training without heating or AC. Everyone in the room is shook. Genos has an autistic outburst. Kabuto roids out so hard he gains a new color palette. Sayatama is reminded that the current day is Saturday, which means it's bargain day at the supermarket. Kabuto does not withstand Sayatama's dedication to frugal shopping and is slain. Genos reassures Sayatama that they can still make it to the supermarket, and all is well. They give the facility a new anus when they leave. A group of communists engage in radical socialism with the goal of forming a utopia where no one works. The populace does not seem to care, so the bald brigade get violent and take out all their rage on a rich guy. They melt steel beams in the wrong building by accident. Bicycle guy is introduced. Sayatama wakes up to the terrorists on TV and is upset by them besmirching his iconic baldness. The news lady urges citizens to be wary of bald people and to flee immediately upon seeing them. Sayatama does not take this well and sets out to defeat the terrorists. Bicycle Guy, known as Mumin Rider, shows up to enforce justice and actually dies for real. Sonic the Edgelord is introduced as a hired bodyguard for the wealthy guy whose tower is under threat. He agrees to eliminate the terrorists and becomes aroused. Rich Guy has a large golden poop on his building, just letting you know. The Communists and Sonic have a scrap. Sonic decapitates everyone and is turned on again. The leader of the terrorists, Hammerhead, is defeated, but survives due to his thick melon. Sayatama is persecuted, but follows the sound of battle and ends up running into the fleeing Gord God. Meanwhile, Genos is repaired and upgraded while he reflects on his decisions. Sayatama is not recognized as a hero by Hammerhead, and they proceed to fight. Hammerhead grows a few more muscles and does a spin move. One Punch Man punches once and the terrorist's battle suit turns into a birthday suit. He flees in shame. The ninja pervert shows up, attacks Sayatama for being bald, and spurgs around. Then Sayatama accidentally punches Sonic in the jingle bells, causing him to become a blueberry and thus flee from battle. Genos and Sayatama have a conversation about One Punch Man's fame over tea. No one knows who One Punch Man is for some reason. Sayatama is especially upset that he was persecuted in town. Genos recommends that Sayatama Sayatama registered to be a hero at the Heroes Association to resolve his recent decline in self-esteem. They decide to register together, no homo. Hammerhead is PK'd in the wilderness by a couple of mysterious robots. Sayatama fills out paperwork and contemplates the possibility of becoming a radicalized terrorist. The Hero Association holds a meeting where they discuss the upcoming exam. There are a lot of applicants this time. The test has begun, and Sayatama breaks everything. Sayatama and Genos meet up and discuss the exam. Genos receives S-Class, whereas Sayatama was given the humble ranking of C-Class. Genos reveals that he was interviewed due to the association discovering the remains of a certain facility from a couple of episodes ago. He assumed responsibility for its destruction and was instantly approved for S-Class. Sayatama ended up as C-Class because he utterly failed the written portion of the exam. Sayatama and Genos are upset, but they both decide the situation isn't all bad and move on. A fancy-looking blue fella has caught wind of Genos' metal bod. Sayatama angers his superior with lax antics. The Class A hero spazzes around and flexes his bureaucratic advantage over the pair. They are disinterested. We find out that the Hero Association was founded by a familiar-looking rich guy whose ample-chinned son was rescued by an unknown hero. Genos feels that he is truly Sayatama's disciple now that they are both registered as heroes. Sayatama has a moment to reflect 
and regret. The Class A hero from before is informed about Sayatama and Genos' test results and decides to ambush Sayatama while he is out on a walk. This, of course, is a bad idea. Sayatama and Genos are hanging out in some kind of chasm, talking about how heroes are given nicknames and ranked C, B, A, and S. Sayatama is particularly interested in the fan clubs. Genos and Sayatama have a duel. Genos flexes his new upgrades, while Sayatama admires the difference in firepower from before. Genos gets outplayed and almost dies instantly when he urges Sayatama to not show mercy. That's a lot of damage. Blue hair guy crashes Sayatama and Genos's Udon party. Sayatama warns Genos about rookie crushing, and Genos decides to have a talk with the interloper. Amai Mask, the blue haired guy, wants to say hello and tell Genos that class A heroes have to be prettier than him to get into S class. Genos was aggressive and uninterested in being pretty, so Mr. Mask moved on. Genos tells Sayatama he'll be back later and then disappears into the night. Days have passed without any incidents. Genos has been perving on Sayatama, looking for any kind of hope of getting stronger. Sayatama finds out that Class C heroes get fired if they don't meet a quota. His previous method of responding to crime was waiting for something to be reported on the news. However, to remain a hero, Sayatama must go and patrol the mean streets to clap cheeks rather than preying on big game. Sayatama rushes off in a hurry, cleverly telling Genos to seek glory among the S-Class heroes, rather than creeping around him. Genos takes the bait and is inspired. Sayatama runs around all day at max speed and finds no work to be had. The next day he is ambushed by Sonic, the edge pervert. Sayatama bites Sonic's sword and shatters it into pieces. Sonic is aroused. Their fight is interrupted by a big C-class muscle mage called Tank Top Tiger, who was instructed by the people to find a scary bald man running around at max speeds. Sonic turns Tank Top Tiger into Tank Bottom Tiger, then starts causing chaos to coax One Punch Man into a duel. Sayatama realizes that his quota problem is solved and promptly dispatches Sonic. Back at headquarters, some suits are talking about heavy monster activity in City Z, when this Class S hero, Tatsumaki, appears. She is upset that there is no work to do and throws a tantrum. She insults them and then flies off. Hey, a new Pokemon just dropped. More suits are discussing scouting reports from various cities. They discuss City Z and how they've sent two Class A heroes to investigate. And here they are, Spring Mustachio and Golden Ball. They wander around and discuss the increase in monsters and the desolation of City Z. Springo and Balls are ambushed by the sentient salad whose tendrils are stronger than steel. Golden Ball gets his gourd glonked out. Mustache goes... <laughs> and unleashes his tomboy ability. I don't know why it's called tomboy. Mustache buys time for reinforcements by getting the salad to monologue. It traveled to City Z to join up with a group of monsters, but couldn't find any of them. Mustachio is able to call in for backup, but is ultimately defeated. The salad monster encounters Sayatama and gets turned into dinner, a cruel fate indeed. Genos thinks that the surplus greens are Sayatama's attempt to grow his hair back. Headquarters is informed of the investigation results from City Z. There is a green babe. Tatsumaki is small and angry, so she huffs in disgust. A gaggle of gimps doing a private investigation of City Z conclude that there was a territory dispute amongst monsters, which caused damage to the surroundings. News and warnings of City Z are distributed to both humans and monsters alike. A meteor is headed towards Earth. Bad news bananas. Everyone is in a panic. The S-Class heroes are summoned to the association. Only Bang, rank 3 in S-Class, is there. He explains that the other heroes aren't very docile and don't usually show up to meetings. He tells Genos about the Doomsday Meteor and how the association wants the S-Class heroes to prevent it from wiping out City Z. Bang recommends that Genos evacuate, but Bang himself doesn't want to leave because his family Family's dojo is located in City Z. He water bends briefly, but Genos has already gone to fight the rock. Genos is about to try out his power gloves when a robot called Metal Knight, rank 7, flexes on him by unleashing the JM Davis collection. It was pretty cool, I guess, but it didn't affect the meteor. Genos does a big brain calculation and starts mind palacing with the help of Bang. He fondles his orb and goes for the kill move. It's alright. 
but also doesn't affect the meteor. Sayatama arrives just in time and enables creative mode in Minecraft. Bang is impressed and the city turns into France post-World War II. Genos and Sayatama reflect on the outcome together three days later. Genos doesn't have the heart to tell Sayatama that the public are painting him as the villain who destroyed the city, rather than as their savior. Metal Knight, Genos, and Sayatama all went up in ranking, with Sayatama now ranked 5th in Class C. He was surprised at the big jump. Genos tells Sayatama about threat rankings, Tiger, Demon, Dragon, and God. Sayatama inspires Genos again. Sayatama decides to go for a walk to observe the damage, when a couple of tank top dorks begin to publicly denounce Sayatama by radicalizing the citizens into an irate frenzy, urging Sayatama to give up on being a hero. Bang synchronizes on a rooftop and recites poetry to himself. The two tank tops try to start a fight with Sayatama, but lose instantly. Sayatama flips his sh and explains in capital letters that he's a hero for fun, and not for admiration. And he doesn't give a hoot, nor does he give a holler. Genos dotes on Sayatama, and they walk home together. No homo. A 30-foot tall Greek octopus shows up and gets exploded by Sayatama. Bicycle guy is shook. The public is beginning to see how strong Sayatama is. It's the Little Mermaid and his merry men. Octopus Destruction brought to you by Stinger from the Hero Association. Genos mentions that Sayatama is going up in ranks quickly, and then gets a call to City J where the fish are. Moomin Rider gallantly pedals into action. Stinger is outnumbered and the moist freaks want his gobstopper. He does a good job, then gets deleted by a bisexual Neptune. Genos and Sayatama are sprinting to City J when Genos abandons Sayatama to run ahead. Moomin Rider is warned by the great value of Avengers, but keeps pedaling anyway. The Hero Association raises the threat level to Demon while everyone is evacuating. A conehead called Lightning Max peeps on Neptune and gets outplayed. Lightning tries his best, but gets the Dumbledore treatment. He's saved at the last second by a jacked homosexual called Piri Piri Prisoner. He is an S class hero, but the association has PPP locked up for being too sexually aggressive. Sonic tagged along with Piri Piri prisoners escape, so now he's here too. PPP prepares for a fight and accidentally tears his boyfriend's hand-knit sweater into pieces with his rippling muscles. He activates rage. The fish and prisoner have a standard manly punch-off. Sonic isn't aroused enough by their fight, so Piri Piri prisoner goes angel style, which is just him in the nude. Genos finds where the fight is, but can't contact One Punch Man. Piri Piri Prisoner eventually becomes a fidget toy and is sent into heaven to be with the rest of the other angels. Neptune reveals himself to be the leader of the Seafolk who are attacking the land. Sonic is unimpressed. They fight. The Sea King gets stronger in the rain. Sonic goes fast but can't keep up with the soggy giant. Moomin Rider is obeying traffic laws when a lost Sayatama stumbles into him. A Mai Mask is on TV being a hot idol. Sonic gets caught by the Sea King. But much like a lizard escaping from prey, he sheds his clothes to flee. Genos has a short conversation with the fleeing pervert, then goes to engage the enemy, who is headed towards an evacuation shelter. The Sea King yeets through the roof, graceful as a gazelle, and introduces himself to the plebs. A random C class hero buys some time, and someone pees his pants for him. The smell of fresh pee pee lures more heroes out of the crowd. Moomin and Sayatama are kicking it acoustic style out on the road. Sonic flashes them both, but only Sayatama sees the streaker's bare bod. He decided to give chase. Bicycle Guy finds he needs to be going towards the shelter, which is in the opposite direction. So he tosses valuable equipment to the ground and pedals away. The wet pants posse prepare for a fight. Sayatama finds Mumin's discarded phone. The piss platoon is vanquished. Genos enters the Thunderdome through Neptune's hole. I hope Genos comes with a warranty. Sayatama tells the association he's gonna go punch the Sea King. The suits think it's a good idea and tell him where the action is. Moomin Rider activates justice mode and probably goes faster. I don't know. Genos tells everyone to GTFO and distributes his hands, or I guess hand, singular because he doesn't have an arm right now. The free-range sardine spits some goop at a zealous child. Genos takes the full force of the Sea King's greasy glob and gets reincarnated as a skeleton. Moomin Rider, the cyclist for justice, 
valiantly throws his bicycle at the Sea King and gets tossed around like a sack of beans. He monologues. The people are frightened, but in awe, they cheer. Bicycle guy freaking dies for real. It's Saitama, and he's all riled up. The crowd does not have much hope for Saitama. Neptune monologues, then gets turned into a bagel. The people go wild. Saitama is disappointed in the Sea King. Sometime later, Saitama and Genos get mail delivered via drone. Saitama gets excited by his mail. It's just hate mail, though. Flashback to the Sea King fight. Some nerd comes out of the crowd and starts flapping his big old lips to the tune of downplaying Saitama's involvement in the battle. He gets violently dismembered by the crowd. Saitama repairs everyone's doubts by lying about his true strength. He explains that the monster was just weakened by the other heroes and he was lucky to get that sweet EXP. Such a giga chad move from Saitama to be the public punching bag in exchange for retaining the defeated hero's dignity. Genos gains an inspiration point, which he can use to have an advantage on a role of his choice. Back to the present, Saitama gets a genuine fan letter and a promotion from the association. He is formally promoted to B-Class at headquarters. The suits ponder if he is actually fake or not. Amai Mask is enraged by the heroes who were unable to put the Sea King on ice. Puri Puri Prisoner sexually harasses the heroes who were injured in the battle. Saitama has some Odin with Mumin Rider. Flashback to when they're on Mumin's bicycle being homies in the rain. They're pretty much best friends now. Moomin Rider confesses that the fan mail from earlier was written by him. They make out. JK. Godzilla emerges from his dank cave and is insulted by Tatsumaki. Tatsumaki throws a rock at him and huffs. Bang water bends in front of Genos and Saitama. Neither of them are impressed. A walking cantaloupe named Chiranko is outraged, but is obliterated by Genos. Turns out Bang's best student, Garo, went nuts and beat up the whole dojo, and then went into hiding. Chiranko is the only student left. The association calls for an emergency S-class meeting. So they all head out. There is a samurai. Tatsumaki is small and angry like usual. Sayatama is unaffected by her feral energy. All the S-class heroes except for Metal Knight and Blast show up. A suit named Sitch explains that their prized fortune teller died by choking on a cough drop. Her last prophecy was a note that said the earth is in trouble. Her predictions always come true, so headquarters is taking precautions. The building is under attack by some freaky birds. Now it's under attack by a vain alien and a vanier spaceship, the association goes into a panic. Some kind of homunculus is on the prowl and gets into a fight with the samurai's apprentice. The S-class heroes decide to sniff out the situation. Saitama bursts forth from the technically indestructible HQ building and goes to fight the ship. The sword guy gets his arm blasted off. Homunculus fella does mitosis and gets cut in half. He regenerates. Bang, Metal Bat, and PPP arrive. The association is still panicking. Two children, Genos, a black guy, and King all discuss how to attack the spaceship. Tatsumaki does her own thing. Saitama is on the ship now, causing havoc and punching the goons. A blue cyclops space Goku named Boros is the king of his castle. A spaceship's resident octopus is in panic because of Sayatama. The news does a report. There are a few familiar faces listening in. The group of heroes fighting a veiny homunculus are struggling with his regeneration. Sayatama is lost. Batman finds out the homunculi's weakness and tells the others. Sayatama is accidentally given directions to the ship's control room and busts in. Here here is a middle-aged pink slug fella. Saitama and the octopus fight. It doesn't last long. The association finds out about the upcoming bombardment and ramp up evacuation measures. The heroes on the ground get shot at by the spaceship, but Tatsumaki throws its Mongo bullets back. Pink guy is regretful. Some more heroes help with the evacuation. Bang gets thrown through some boulders and is paralyzed from the neck down. Boros is chilling on his throne. Saitama finally makes it to Boros. Boros and Sayatama have a chat. Boros conquered the universe, so he started searching for an equal to fight with. Saitama doesn't hesitate and gives him punch. Boros survives, making him the second thing in existence that can survive an attack from One Punch Man. We get this legendary scene. Boros activates his RBG gamer lights in preparation for the fight to come. Saitama and Boros have a brief punch off. Tatsumaki berates Tank Top Top for trying to help. 
then throws several buildings. The aliens panic and regret. Drive Knight warns Genos about Metal Knight for some reason and pieces out. Bang is actually alright cause he's a G. Atomic Samurai shoots for the hoop and Bang gets the layup. That's a big W for the lads. All the heroes that were around leave the rest to the big boys. Saitama and Boros take their fight to the roof. Boros fires his laser and lands a hit on Saitama, then monologues about how strong he is, regenerating his arm in the process. One Punch Man cuts Boros's speech short and expresses his disappointment. Boros goes Super Saiyan, and Saitama participates in the Japanese space program. It's all very dramatic. The moon gets a new hole, and Boros is a white hedgehog now. Saitama makes it back to Earth and punches Boros again. Boros gets to experience what it's like to be a liquid for a brief moment. Boros and Saitama both release their ultimate kill moves. Collapsing Star Roaring Cannon and Killer Move. Serious, serious, serious punch. Boros's big red orb is destroyed, and he turns into a raisin. Boros is fulfilled, but One Punch Man is still empty inside. The ship goes down and the heroes flee. A My Mask is upset that City A is gone. He has problems and insults the guys who fought the veiny lad. Metal Knight shows up like a little goblin and starts looting. Genos tries to lecture him on morals, but fails. Some aliens survived, but are massacred by a My Mask. Mask swags off into the distance. Saitama spooks Tatsumaki by plopping out of the ship. Tatsumaki is completely ignored and turns Genos into scrap. Bang chases Tatsumaki off like an Englishman defending his sausage roll from a seagull. The ship is scavenged and turned into Hero Association Headquarters 2, Electric Boogaloo. In the after credits, Genos saves a child representing Canada, and Saitama obliterates a zombie pigman who escaped the nether. All is back to normal and Saitama is still too strong. That's the end of season one of One Punch Man. Hey, thank you for partaking in the product of my labors. Like and comment if you enjoyed the video, subscribe and click the bell icon if you want to see more, and sign up to my Patreon if you want to feed me by hand. Uh, I don't know what I'm doing, so uh, uh, yeah.